Galatians chapter 2. Verses 1 through 10. That's what we're going to be going through today. I'm going to read those verses. I'm going to read those aloud from the New International Translation. And we will proceed from there. And this is Paul writing to the church in Galatia. The church was at Galatia. He says, 14 years later, I went up to Jerusalem, this time with Barnabas. I took, also, I took Titus all along also. I went in response to a revelation and set before them the gospel I preach among the Gentiles. But I did this privately to those who seemed to be leaders for fear that I was running or had run my race in vain. Not even Titus, who was with me, was compelled to be circumcised, even though he was a Greek. This matter arose because some false brothers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ and to make us slaves. We did not give in to them for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might remain with you. For those who seem to be important, whatever, excuse me, for those who seem to be important, whatever they were made, makes no difference to me. God does not judge the external appearance. These men added nothing to my message. On the contrary, they saw that I had been entrusted with the task of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, just as Peter had been to the Jews. For God, who was at work in the, in the ministry of Peter as an apostle to the Jews, also was also at work in my ministry as an apostle to the Gentiles. James, Peter, and John, those reputed pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace given to me. They agreed that we should also go to the Gentiles and they to the Jews. Also, they asked that we should continue to remember the poor, the very thing I was eager to do. Amen. And this is Paul's continuation of, again, his letter that he wrote to the churches at Galatia where he had preached the gospel, where they had received the gospel, but now he's having to go back and teach un and unteach some of the things because the through the efforts of the Judaizers, through the efforts of what he calls spies, spies, with the intent of coming in and bringing bondage back where liberty and freedom had been established. So Paul is talking about now to where he, he opens up in verse 1 that he, he's 14 years later, he went back again to Jerusalem. And this time he took Barnabas with him and he took Titus also. He went in response to a revelation that, 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 that he ought to go. God revealed to him basically his need to go. And he laid before, it says he laid before them the, the, the gospel that he was preaching to the Gentiles. And he did that not so that they could approve what it was he was teaching, more so for the manner in which he was teaching, the way in which he was presenting it to the to the Gentiles. He says he did it privately among the leaders for fear that he was running his race in vain. And again, making sure because any preaching, any teaching of the gospel is never in vain, but he was saying that in that he presented it before them so that they would affirm the manner in which he was preaching it. Because without their affirmation, he felt like, yeah, it would have been in vain. His, his past teachings. Because there's a 14-year gap from the time that he went to Jerusalem the first time and left and now, and now came back. And he says it that he's thankful for their approval 
of the manner in which he's, he's preaching it because it says even Titus was not compelled to be circumcised because had the when he went to Jerusalem he was speaking with some, some of the original apostles that had followed Jesus and if he had gone in and told them the, the, the message that he was, was preaching and they felt like his message wasn't the gospel, the true gospel, then they would have re <laughs> I'll say re-preached it, but they would have preached and shared it with Titus and then made him have to be circumcised, even though he was a Greek. But here it is, they he goes before them, <clears throat> and what he's basically wanting to do is make sure that there's continuity in what they're all preaching. He has to preach because he's preaching to the Gentiles. It's the gospel, but he's got to preach in a certain way. They're preaching to the Jews, and they're preaching the same gospel, but they have to preach it also in a different way. Because of the, because of the background, because of the religious teaching and background that the Jews have compared to what the Gentiles have. The Jews are coming out from... <laughs> legalistic teaching of the Pharisees and the leaders, whereas the Gentiles are simply coming out to where they believed in multiple gods, different gods, or no God. So the gospel has to be preached that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the way, that it's all about Jesus. But when you're preaching it to the Jews, it has to be a certain way. And when you're preaching it to the Gentiles, it has to be a certain way. So that, they, so that they will understand, so that they will be able to receive. Not just receive it, but take it and run with it. Take it and apply it to their lives and make it real. But they also say that, and again in verse 4, this matter arose because some brothers infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom which we have in Christ and to make us slaves. They were they, the, 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 again, same Judaizers, what they come in and they're trying to now bring back old legalisms, binding legalisms that the gospel freed them from already. So, because they, they came in to spy, to spy on the freedom that we have in Christ and to make us slaves. But Paul says, we did not give them, give in to them for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might remain with you. They didn't entertain them. They didn't even, like I said, yeah, they didn't entertain because they didn't want the, the, the believers there to even think that that had any validity at all. In verse 6, he says, as for those who seemed important, whatever they were makes no difference to me. God judges not the external appearance. These men added nothing to my message. When I first read this some time ago, and even for a while when I read this, it sounded like Paul was not demeaning, but taking importance or credence away from those whom he was talking to, but he wasn't doing that at all and that's not what he was saying. He says, as for those who seemed important, and he's talking about the, the, uh, the Jerusalem apostles, okay? He says, whatever they were makes no difference to me. He's talking about the fact that they were apostles before him. They were apostles in a different manner than he. So that wasn't important because the fact of the matter is that they were all apostles and they had all experienced Christ in that special, same kind of one-on-one -on -one and intimate manner. God does not judge the external appearance. So because God had sent Christ into the world and he called the 12 that, that he called and then Judas uh, took his life and the 11 proceeded on and they brought in the, the other, the other, the twelfth one, uh, the other one to add into the twelve, and then Paul by himself encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus. That made them all apostles. 
because of their experience. So that's what he's saying there. And these men added nothing to my message. That's saying that, that, that yes, they agreed with what he was preaching as far as the truth of his gospel. And they agreed the matter that he was bringing it unto the Gentiles so that they could believe and receive the way they needed to. This is on the contrary to any of that. They saw that I had been entrusted with the task of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles just as Peter had been to the Jews. So there it is confirmed again. Paul was called an apostle to go speak to those whom he had come out from the midst of. The Gentiles. The ones who he had the, the, uh, uh, a closer association with, a greater recognition to, if you will, because he had Roman citizenship. So he was called unto them. Didn't mean that he was only going to speak to them, but he was called the message that God had put in him, the things that God had brought him up through and allowed him to go through in his life, sent him to the Gentiles. Peter sent to the Jews. For God, who was at work in the ministry of Peter, as an apostle to the Jews, was also at work in, in my ministry, as an apostle to the Gentiles, same God. Same God. That's all he's saying, same God. The continuity of the gospel is strongly dependent on same God. Same God. Same God sent Jesus. Same God, that same Jesus spoke to each and every apostle each and every apostle Matthew Mark Matt, those 12 I'm not even going to try to begin naming them all because I'll leave somebody out and get it wrong but the 12 and then Paul that association with Christ gave them the commonality put them on one accord Speaking and preaching the gospel in truth. That's, that's, that's one accord right there. That's proceeding forward. That allows him to proceed forward with everything. Verse 9, he says, James, Peter, and John, those reputed pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace given to me. So, because of this council, this meeting, to, <clears throat> excuse me, meeting together in Jerusalem of the of the apostles, the called and, and, and the called apostles, Peter, James, and John. We know him. We know them. That was Jesus' inner circle. Peter, James, and John. Whatever. Whenever when Jesus went to pray in Gethsemane, he took Peter, James, and John with him. When he went to the when he went up to the mount for the uh, to the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John were there. So that those inner circle ones, Peter, James, and John, those reputed pillars, he calls them, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace. They didn't go there with the purpose of being approved by them. They didn't go there with the purpose of being confirmed or affirmed by them. They went there for the, the simple purpose of, yes, this is the gospel that I preach. This is the gospel, have, and this is how I bring it to the Gentiles. And the Jerusalem apostles made the point, okay, you're good and offered them the right hand of fellowship saying yes we are one accord yes we are preaching the same gospel yes we are of the same cause and the significance of that is again if you look at Peter, James and John and their 
I'll say more intimate relationship with Christ, be, be in the inner circle, be in the inner circle, okay, of those who were called. They were with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. They were with Jesus further away from the rest in the Garden of Gethsemane as he, as he prayed. Then you have Paul, who was converted on the road to Damascus by Christ, had his name changed from Saul to Paul. And then you have Barnabas. And again, I was, I had to, I was reading this week and I had, to, I, had to, I had to look up who Barnabas was because like I said, I, I read, I've read before in, in previous commentary that the account of the rich young ruler who came to Jesus was Barnabas in his youth. He was a rich young ruler, so he was a young man who had attained and achieved a lot. Much like Paul. Who had changed, who had, Paul, who was, uh, 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 he was a Jew among Jews. He was a, a, a Pharisee, he was learned. He, he had Roman citizenship. He had the financial backing that of, of, of being able to um, go and persecute the church and everything. He was he had all these accolades and achievements and accomplishments that he had. And then you have Barnabas, comparatively speaking, the rich young ruler who had basically those same achievements and accomplishments. He was rich he was young and he was a ruler and he had and he came running up to Jesus they they count the rich young ruler he came running up to Jesus saying what must I do to be saved and Jesus said has you kept have, have you kept the commandments and he named a few and he said yes these I've kept from my youth Jesus said, one thing you lack. Sell all that you have and give to the poor. Stop being a gatherer for your glory. Stop being a gatherer and a collector for your glory. And give in my name. Become a giver in my name. And we know the account of the rich young ruler. He walked away sad and dejected. Sad and dejected. So, and I didn't look up the timeline, but this was this was Christ speaking to. Now, at this time, Paul talking about Barnabas, he and Barnabas, at the bare minimum, at the barest minimum time frame, Paul talks about 14 years between his trips to Jerusalem. So we don't know how many how much time. There, there's, there's, there's at least 14 years time that has passed from the time Barnabas spoke with Jesus as the rich young ruler to now where we see Barnabas traveling with Paul. Paul and Barnabas' testimonies are similar. When you read the uh, the the, the the words of the commentators that, that align the testimonies and the, 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 the timeline and the life lifeline of the rich young ruler and Barnabas. So Paul and Barnabas had similar testimonies. So you have Peter, James, and John, P Jesus' inner circle, and then you have Paul and Barnabas, who each had unique conversion experiences with Jesus. Paul thought he was doing God's will as he was persecuting the church. And then Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? The rich young ruler thought he was going to add Jesus to his list of accomplishments. <laughs> another another you know, plaque on his wall. I met Jesus. I know Jesus. <laughs> but Jesus said, you lack something. So here it is. Here it is. There's, there's the similarity of theirs because years down the line, Somewhere is sunk in. 
Somewhere it sunk in for the rich young ruler. And he became that faithful traveler, that faithful companion to Paul. Again, verse 9. James, Peter, and John, those reputed pillars, gave me and Barnabas the, the, the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace given to me. They agreed that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the Jews. So the purpose that God had for each group, the purpose that God had for each ones, if you will, was just there confirmed. Brought them together brought them together so that they could confer among one another that yes, the gospel was indeed being preached. That I've been sharing this to the Gentiles as you all have been sharing this with the Jews. Same gospel, different manners of having to, have, having to teach it because of who it is you're speaking to. And think about how that's the, that's the versatility of the gospel. Paul says that I have become all things to all men that some may be saved. I've become all things to all men that some may be saved. That, and that, that's just confirmation right there that everybody's not going to receive the gospel. That everybody is not going to say yes to us right there on the spot. But we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen down the line. We don't know what's going to happen down the line. It's just our, our job before the Lord, commissioned from the Lord, commissioned by Jesus, go ye and make disciples of all nations. Even as we preach, teach, and share the, the truth of the gospel, everybody's not going to receive it. But God brought this, he, he, he brought this, 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 this gathering of, of the men together, because in, in one, actually, I got because I have my parallel Bible here today, and in the New American Standard, verses chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, it calls it the council at Jerusalem. As if it, it had purpose and meaning that they were all gathering there, that the, the, the Jerusalem apostles had gathered there for a purpose, and that Paul was sent in there, God, that, that God orchestrated that for this, for this very meeting. And again, it says they agreed that, that we should go into the Gentiles and that the and they to the Jews. And then verse 10 says, and they asked that we should continue to rem remember the poor, the very thing that I was eager to do. The very thing that I was eager to do. So they basically said about, you know what? We're all good with this. We're all good with this. We're all good. We all got this gospel message down. You're going to go to the Jews. You're going to go to the Gentiles. Preach it the way you have to so that they can receive it. We're going to go to the Jews and preach it this way so that they have opportunity to receive it. But just remember the poor when you go. Remember the poor when you go. And in saying that, I believe it has a twofold message here. Because none of the apostles were rich. <laughs> of the original 12, they were fishermen, <laughs> a couple of tax collectors, okay? So they, 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 they might have had some. They, they might have had some, some stored up. But they, they, they weren't affluent like that. Remember the poor. Remember the poor. So he said that, that as you preach the gospel, as you make believers, make sure that you are having them to, to reach out into the community and help those in need. Remember the poor. Because as you help those in need, you're also given a chance to share the gospel with them as well. That you might make converts as well. So remember the poor. And Paul says that was and that was the very thing I was eager to do. He's like, I've already, I, I got you on that. I got you on that. That's basically confirmation to what he was already doing. So 
So here, verses, you know, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, the continuity of the gospel. The continuity of the gospel. God brought, you know, 14 years after his first trip to Jerusalem, Paul is brought back and he brings Barnabas and Titus with him. And when they get there, the Jerusalem apostles, those who were, who were there, they conferred to make sure that they were sharing the same gospel. Paul wanted to let them know that I'm preaching it this way unto the Gentiles so that they can receive. The Jews, Peter, and, the, the, uh, and James and John, the three pillars, had to preach the Jewish, preach the gospel to the Jews in this manner to make sure that they would be able to receive. He had to make sure, just as he said in chapter one, was talking about chapter one, how the Judaizers came in, how they're trying to water down the gospel, how they're trying to remove the liberty that Christ brought. And they're trying to bring back the chains of the legalism, the bondage of the, of the legalism. Then again, we have the, the confirmation. All about the continuity of the gospel. All about the continuity of the gospel. As long as the gospel is being preached in truth for the purpose of saving souls, for the purpose of giving God glory, for the purpose of bringing his truth to those who need it, form and fashion have their place and their purpose, but they don't change the gospel. And the big thing to remember is not to allow the truth to be watered down. Not to let those who have a slightly different version of the gospel, not to let them get a foothold in truth. Not to even give the impression that we're giving credence to, that we're giving backing or support to those who have a slightly different gospel. Because they want to come in, they're spies, they want to come in and they just want to change a little bit of what the gospel is. Mm -hmm. Well, our God is just like your God. Except, well, we believe in Jesus too, but so we have to guard against that. The truth of the gospel cannot be changed. The truth of the gospel cannot be watered down. The truth of the gospel cannot be compromised. And that was part of the purpose for this council here, for this, for this gathering, to make sure. And it just really, when I think of the, it's just, how, it's, how it's just mentioned here, Peter, James, John, Paul, and Barnabas, the, the power of the testimonies, the power of, 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 of who those are, that's right there talking. And here they are about to just disperse and go unleash the gospel on the world as we know it, as it was known then. Parting, it's, it's, it was the gospel that brought one accord. It was the gospel that, that, that brought continuity. The continuity of the gospel brought continuity to the brethren. And in the end, they said, make sure to remember the poor. Remember the poor. Because it was not just the poor and the finances, the poor, those lacking in substance and sustenance. <laughs> Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit as well. Mm. So if you preached and taught that, blessed are the poor in spirit, he says, remember the poor. <laughs> remember the poor in spirit. Those are who we need to go to as well. Paul and Barnabas, their considerable backgrounds, so yeah, they, they remember the poor, those who, who, who are lacking, but also in their background, think about the poor in spirit as well. Because they were in that spot. Though Paul had a lot, he knew that he was poor in spirit. 
though Barnabas had a lot, he had there had to be a realization of the, his 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 spiritual poverty for him, for him to be able to come to and at least at the minimum 14 years after having heard the gospel. Now, now he's being brought by Paul and with Titus to have sit down with Jesus' inner circle. So ultimately, again, this is what I shared last week, it's the power of the gospel. It's the power of the gospel. The vessel God uses is important, but it's the power of the gospel. It's the power of the gospel. It's the power of the gospel that allowed the churches of Syria and Cilicia to believe that Saul, the converted Saul, was now a preacher of the very thing, a purveyor of the very thing that he tried to wipe out. It was the faith in the, in the gospel and the power of the gospel that allowed them to believe, that, that didn't make them hesitant to, to allow him to come in their midst, but they received him and, and he was able to come in. That they didn't, he didn't have to prove anything, but all that had to be said was that Paul preached. The one who used to persecute now preaches. Faith in the power of the gospel wipes out all skepticism. Faith in the power of the gospel wipes out the uh, any the power that any non-truth is going to bring. Faith in the power of the gospel. That's what we stand on. That's what gets us through. That's what brings continuity among the believers, among the brethren. That's what puts us on one accord. Being on one accord is being of the same purpose. Being on one accord is saying that, guess what? This is what we got to get done, and this is what we're going to get done. So again, just remember, the power of the gospel, the continuity of the gospel is the power of the gospel. And what God puts inside of us, he's put inside each one of us to go out in the places where we are to minister <laughs> in the manner that we need to minister so the people will receive. But it's about the power of the gospel. Amen? Amen. 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 Give God some praise today. Come on, let's give God some more praise.